And so here we are, the final three episodes of Henry Cavill's time as Geralt. And you know what, good for him, he's finally free from watching a character he loves to play, being dragged through the mud and treated like the shit on your shoe. This is no heroic send-off, this is what you do to a character to bring him to his lowest point. At the end of the show, Geralt is beaten, bruised and desperate. What a surprise, Lauren the compulsive liar has lied again. She lied about not putting her politics into the show, she lied about doing a one for one adaptation of the books, and she lied about respecting the source material. Fuck me, this season has been absolute dog shit, and I couldn't give a fuck about season 4. Every character keeps jumping around the place bumping into the exact person they were looking for without any effort. It's lazy, it's contrived, and it's what you do when you're a dog shit writer. The dialogue and a lot of the acting is also terrible, the show is disjointed, and the pacing is shit. The show is worse than a waste of time, as it gives you a fucking headache if you try to pay attention to it. So for one last time, let's examine the rotten corpse that is the Witcher franchise. Episode 6 starts with the Redanian soldiers capturing mages including Geralt, but Yennefer is given plenty of time to wander the halls, find Geralt's sword, and to escape through a secret passage in her room. Fuck me, this coup is poorly executed. You would think that you would take the key members of the council very quickly, in one massive swoop. No, I guess they go room by room very slowly, shouting aloud that there's a coup on. Yennefer almost sneaks out of the castle until she is attacked by Lydia, a mage working for Vilgefort. How exactly did she know where Yennefer was? I don't know. So as she is about to kill Yennefer, Deus Ex Triss shows up out of nowhere to save her life. Oh, how convenient! Man, the Redanians are fucking terrible at capturing mages if this many got free. So Yen decides to abandon Geralt to go after Ciri and Triss stays behind. Tessia then walks into the room, and for some reason she hasn't been shackled. Ah. Now this is incredibly stupid and contrived as fuck, because if the soldiers had simply done their jobs, then she would not have been able to undo everybody's chains. What's worse is that it takes some time for her to free everyone. If one soldier simply went up and hit her, then none of the mages would have been freed. Fuck me. So because everyone had acted like a retard, the mages are able to fight back, and Geralt ends up breaking Dijkstra's leg. Now what is Philippa's punishment for treason? I'm afraid we're going to have to ask you to leave. Why are the mages in Aratusa so forgiving of betrayal? At the very least, somebody should slam her head against the table. We then see Vilgefort, who teleports the Nilfgaardians and elves into the palace. Not just them, but Fringilla Vigo also appears as well. What? Just how exactly did Fringilla know when the attack was going to happen? All she did was talk to this man about missing boats, and somehow she was able to figure out exactly when and where the Nilfgaardians were going to attack. We cut to Yen who instantly finds Ciri on the road outside, but so too is Riance as he attacks the group, but they end up getting saved by Deus Ex Geralt, who somehow knew exactly where they were going to be, and made his way out of a castle that was under siege, right in time to kill Riance. Afterwards, Yen runs back to help Tessaya, who is electrocuting everybody with the help of those stupid fucking monuments that were in Blood Origins. But this ends up making her really old for some reason, until she is rescued by Yen. I thought that fire magic is supposed to be the most dangerous type of magic there is, and yet this weird lightning monument magic does even more damage to Tessaya than Yennefer's fire magic usage ever did. What exactly are the rules to this magic, because at this point they are just making it up as they go along. We also have a scene with Kahir, who is in the middle of the castle fighting mages, until he decides to go look for Ciri. Somehow he gets past all of the mages and escapes the castle very quickly, and immediately bumps into Ciri, the one girl he was looking for. Isn't that convenient? So they end up not having a fight, and Kahir gets on his knees and begs and cries in front of Ciri. Just how many times in this show have they gotten a man to beg and cry to a woman? This is getting ridiculous. Geralt and Ciri go looking for a boat until Vilgefort shows up. He has a fight with Geralt, but ends up winning pretty easily. Afterwards, he chases Ciri, who for no reason at all has decided to head straight for the giant elven monolith. 
She then has a weird conversation with it and blows it up. In Blood Origins, for those of you who were fortunate enough not to watch that flaming bag of dog shit, the last time somebody fucked with the monoliths and destroyed it caused a conjunction of spheres to happen, but it doesn't do it this time. The reason why that might be is because the writing is fucking terrible and Lauren doesn't even understand what the fuck she has already written. So after that retarded scene, we cut back to Geralt, who just after losing to Vilgefort was lying down on the sand, is some how underwater how exactly did this happen fuck if i know so as he is about to sink into the bottom of the ocean he is then rescued by triss in what seems to be very shallow water ah. and how exactly did triss know where Geralt was again i don't fucking know but as we have seen many times in the show characters just appear right when the plot needs them to and that's the end of episode six well that was fucking dreadful that entire episode had people running in and out of the castle so easily that you've got to wonder why exactly did the mages choose to stay and die when they could have fled so easily. Moving on, episode 7 starts with Jaskier and Radovid having a lover's quarrel. I don't give a fuck. We see that Geralt is so injured with his fight against Vilgefort that he has to be taken back to those stupid looking druids that were in season 1. Now he does absolutely nothing and is confined to a bed for the rest of the episode. Once again, such a heroic send-off for Henry Cavill. He got beaten up by a mage and is now stuck in a bed. This is awful! The rest of the episode follows Siri, who turns out has been teleported to a desert somewhere. She does a lot of wandering around feeling sorry for herself before meeting the feminist Bloody Falker. Powerful women have been labelled insane since the dawn of time. It's bullshit. Who the fuck cares? She then gets attacked by a giant monster, picks up a rock half her size, and does a cringe slow motion jump killing it. That was so gay. So after learning that she is amazing, she ends up getting captured by bandits, and that's the end of episode 7. Episode 8, the final episode, and Henry Cavill's last hurrah as Geralt, starts off with him still in bed. So after finally getting up, he then spends most of the episode trying to heal before eventually heading off to find Ciri. So as Geralt crosses the border, he sees the border guards reject a family because they don't have the money to pay the toll. Then for some reason, one of the guards steals the toy from the little girl and tells the family to go away. So what is Geralt's response? Well, he decides to kill every single guard at the border. Are you insane? Now I know the man is an asshole, but did he and 12 other men deserve to die all because he stole a little girl's toy? The punishment doesn't suit the crime. This doesn't make Geralt come across as cool, in fact he comes across as a complete lunatic. Remember the trailer from The Witcher 3? A woman is being attacked by a group of men, and when the men try to hang her, only then does Geralt step in. Whereas in this one, Geralt immediately kills the first border guard, forcing the others to react. So despite killing almost 15 men, Geralt still has to be saved by a woman. Of course he does. This woman is one of the druids who helped nurse Geralt back to health, and she decides to help look for Ciri. Now the real reason why this random woman is forcibly inserted into the story is because he always needs a feminine character to drag down his masculinity. Next up is Yen, who is babysitting Tessaya for most of the episodes before she dies. Who gives a shit? Then we cut to Redania, and for failing the coup, Dijkstra acts like a pathetic simp and tells Philippa to kill him in order to save her life. But she decides to get her tranny assassin to kill the king instead and have Radovid replace him. This is fucking retarded. Radovid already knows that Dijkstra and Philippa are the ones who killed the queen beforehand, and yet he is completely oblivious as to how his brother died. It's obviously fucking them, and yet he won't do anything about it. Redania is known most of all for its intelligence, and yet intelligence is the one thing none of these characters possess. Speaking of stupid rulers, we cut to Amir, and he just allows Fringilla Vigo to regain her position in Nilfgaard, even though she was banished for high treason. Considering his name is the white flame that dances on the graves of his foes, he sure does love forgiving people, probably because every ruler in the show is an absolute retard. We have more evidence to support this, with the fact that Vilgefort manages to fool him into believing that fake Ciri is his daughter. 
How exactly did Filgerfort know where to find fake Siri? The last time we saw her, she was in the druid house alongside the werewolf. No clue, he must have just read the plot, otherwise that doesn't make any sense. Lastly, we see Siri who is captured by bandits, and she ends up joining a gang called the Rats, after getting rescued by a bunch of teenagers who manage to overpower men twice their size. And that is the last scene of season 3. That was awful. This season was a bloated, disjointed, badly written mess, with shit dialogue, terrible CGI, and with contrived bullshit happening all over the place. This show is worse than cat shit, and somehow each season is even worse than the last. Not only has Lauren and her cronies proven that they lack any talent as writers, but they are also compulsive liars as well. The last two episodes of season 3 have Geralt doing almost nothing, whilst we're four to deal with pointless fucking characters, but this was Netflix's plan from day one to give us a bastardization of The Witcher and to subvert it with shit woke politics that kills everything it touches. But despite everything Lauren has done, Lauren will keep being rewarded for her retardation as Netflix will keep dumping fuck tons of money into it. Because The Witcher isn't about profit, quality or respecting the fans. No, it's about ideology. It's about taking something people love and turning it into a giant pile of cat shit and then trying to force that cat shit down your throat. If I had my way, I would take the writers to the tallest flight of stairs I could find and throw them down it, hoping that they would break their necks on the way down.